Sacred grounds fade to vastness. Mother Moon cast your spell on these fields. Um, what was the initial spark? What set the ball rolling? Um, initially, I, w I wanted to slow down a little bit after the Ghost Lights tour because I was a little battle worn, I have to say. Um, you must not forget. And I almost forgot that, but by that time I remembered it and I was reflecting. I had just done 17 albums in 20 years uh, and I had written most of the stuff and organized most of the stuff and produced most of the stuff. And, um, and I had also done 10 world tours within 15 years. And as I said, organized everything, 5,000 interviews. Long story short, I thought I was becoming, um, I was becoming a part of a, of a system that didn't leave much room for me to make decisions. Um, and nobody pointed, pointed a, with a gun at me. Nobody really forced me. It was really, uh, it was automatically happening. I was like a perpetuum mobile. And I really, really, really needed to slow down a little bit. So I decided I'm gonna have a break. I built a studio myself and, um, and I worked on what I thought was maybe going to be a solo record just for myself. I didn't have a record contract, not with that guy, not with Avantasia. Um, and um, I didn't want to fulfill expectations because everybody else, I thought, uh, had an idea of what I was going to do next. Only I didn't have an idea. So I said, okay, I'm gonna have a break. And um, yeah, the solo record was not, was not really happening because when I had the first material written, I thought, well, it sounds like Avantasia. And I already have a solo project. Avantasia is a solo project in a way. It's got treasured guest musicians, uh, of course, but still I make the decisions and it's, it's my band. And it sounded like Avantasia, it felt like Avantasia, and also if I would ever do a solo project, I asked myself who would I get in as a guitar player. And of course, Sasha Ped is the greatest guitar player in the world. So, so I would have asked Sasha, and if I would have to pick a, my favorite producer, or co-producer, or whatever you call it, I, it would have been Sasha again. So um, there was no, no point really doing a solo record. And um, slowly but surely I knew, or really I think quite, quite soon I knew this was going to be a new Avantasia record. The difference was this time that I did not have a deadline and I didn't really care if it was going to take one year, two years, three years, four years, because I really wanted to break out of that working routine of delivering. And it worked. It worked. Here I am doing the same thing again, doing interviews and speaking about the record. But it's, um, but it's still a different feeling, I think. And uh, I don't want to rush that. I don't want to have such a lethal pace in the future anymore. I really want to relax a little bit. I'm getting older. <laughs> Cold is the wind bringing forth clarity. Time rushing on. To me, England is peace and inspiration and tradition and um, um, it was really funny to go there because I took some of my I was I was going on vacation uh, I was having a creative vacation so to speak and I took some of my recording equipment with me and I wrote and re even recorded some stuff in hotels and uh, then I'd go and sit in a pub and, and um, I was surrounded by Victorian buildings looking at people and, and um, I don't know what it is, but England is extremely inspiring to me. Maybe it's got something to do with them embracing um, or being so aware of their tradition. Um, because in England, things, they don't really renew everything immediately. They rather, they leave it broken and, and attach the price tag uh, or the tag vintage to it, the label. <laughs> and and uh, and that's something I really I really I really like how they embrace tradition and how things are vintage over there. It's a magical place. It's hard to describe. Um, I mean, look at look at a pub entrance in in um, in any place of the world, and then look at a pub entrance in in England. It's different. And when you when you enter a pub, there's uh, there's red carpet on the floor in a pub. I mean, in England, Englishmen, and then there's red carpet on the floor, mahogany mantelpiece, and oil paintings on the wall. It's everything is so, well, it's magic. 
and it's it's just I, I like composing in England and I love England. I think you're inspired by everything that um, leaves an impression on you, consciously or subconsciously, I think. Um, of course, uh, there's nothing like writing a song with, with Ronnie Atkins or Bob Catley in mind, or, or Johan Lander, or Jeff Tate, you name it. Um, but also inspiration is a result of your mental constitution, I think, and whatever happens in your environment, and whatever leaves a, yeah, a conscious or subconscious impression on you. Um, it's, I think inspiration in general is a very, very fragile um, little flower, and um, <laughs> You have to be a little stubborn, I think, at times even, to uh, to maintain your inspiration and to maintain your um, desire to um, to compose and dream up things. And um, I believe it's hard to approach it like like um, producing a, a body shampoo. I think um, I really envy artists who do that. Who say, "Oh, you need that type of song. Well, let me do it." Oh, you need that? Well, okay, I can do it. Whatever, whatever you pay me for. I really envy those artists, but maybe it would work to a certain extent. But I prefer just doing things that I like and see if I find somebody else who likes it as well. <laughs> a lonely heart and an endless line. I love the album. I have to say, every artist says about their album uh, that they love him. I really do, and I was never wrong about it. I really love the last one. I love Ghost Lights, and I love the new album as well. Uh, I'm the happiest person on earth. I love the songs, I love the production, I love the artwork, I love the guest contributions. Um, I'm happy about my own vocal performance, I have to say. Uh, that was also because I recorded a lot of stuff in my own studio whenever I felt like doing it, and I think that all, that's also good because your voice is... Um, is really, really influenced or affected by what's going on in your mental world. And if you're stressed out, I think it's not as good. And I was really not stressed out. I would have a glass of red wine and say, OK, I'm going to go record some chorus tonight. And just go there, and 10 minutes later, I was recording. And that's why I think I have delivered a great vocal performance, really. <laughs> now I'm blowing my own trumpet uh, too hard. Um, well. Everybody can hear that the album's been put together with a lot of love, down the line, I think. And uh, the working atmosphere was really relaxed and... Yes, I love it, really. And you should check it out. Everybody, you should check it out too. Where's the camera? This one? You should check it out. <laughs>